Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at this time I yield three minutes to the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul, the ranking member of the Domestic Monetary Policy Committee. The gentleman is recognized for three minutes. I thank the gentleman from Alabama for yielding. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise in opposition uh, to this piece of legislation. I'm afraid it's not going to do much to solve our problems. I know it's very well intended, and it's believed that more regulations will solve the problem, but uh, quite frankly, the problem that we're facing comes from a very deeply flawed monetary system. I had made an attempt uh, to emphasize this point by uh, talking about a full audit of the Federal Reserve, and fortunately, uh, this House was strongly in support of this piece of legislation. Uh, there's 320 co-sponsors of this bill. It passed uh, rather easily on the Financial Services Committee, and then it was put into the House version uh, of this reform package. But it was removed in conference. Although there's some attention given to getting more information from the Fed, it truly doesn't uh, serve as, as a full audit. If we don't eventually address the Federal Reserve in depth, we will never understand how financial bubbles are formed and why more regulations tend to fail. Uh, if the financial markets were pleased with what we're doing here today in the discussion in the last several weeks, they wouldn't be reeling as they are at this very moment. So I would say that we uh, uh, should be very cautious in this expanding the role of the regulatory agencies, which, doesn't, uh, which does not solve the problem, at the same time giving more power to the Federal Reserve doesn't make much sense if the theory is right that the Federal Reserve is the source of much of our problems. Now, some objected to the uh, transparency bill of the Federal Reserve and said that that was uh, too much information, that the Federal Reserve had to be totally independent. The Federal Reserve Transparency Act doesn't do anything about removing transparency. It doesn't change monetary policy. It just says that the American people and the Congress have a right to know what they do. After the crisis hit, the Federal Reserve injected $1.7 trillion and guaranteed many more trillions of dollars, and it was very hard to get any information whatsoever. So an ongoing audit to find out exactly what they do and why they do it, I think, would be a first step to finding out the relationship of the Federal Reserve system to the banking system and the financial uh, community. Uh, transparency is something the American people have been asking for and they want. They didn't like the lack of transparency with the TARP funds. And once the American people found out about what goes on at the Fed, they want transparency of the Fed. So fortunately today we will have a chance to vote on this because it will be in the recommittal motion and it will give, be, give us a chance to put the, inform, put the language back in, the uh, H.R. 1207, the Federal Reserve Transparency Act, a chance to audit the Fed. So this will be a perfect opportunity to emphasize the importance of the Fed and to say that we do need a full audit. The 